What's up guys, I'm back with another video. I know I said in my Lady A video that I wasn't gonna be doing these news roundup type videos, but here I am doing a news roundup type video. I, I don't know how to explain that. The news isn't that serious this time. We're not talking about face masks and racism. We're just talking about Garth Brooks primarily. And I say let the conversation begin. You know, Mr. I like that himself. I like that. One of my favorite people to meme here on the channel, one of the most iconic country performers of all time, has decided he's done. He is done being your entertainer of the year. Garth Brooks had one of his Facebook live streams from Inside Studio G to announce that after a lot of consideration, he was going to remove himself from the entertainer of the year running. Today we sit here and humbly ask with all the gratefulness and love in the world, uh, we're going to do it ourselves. We're going to pull ourselves out of Entertainer of the Year. Entertainer of the Year is basically the highest prize in country music, and if you will recall, Garth Brooks won the trophy last year at the awards ceremony, and it was interesting to watch the response because almost everyone thought this was a two-horse race between Eric Church and Carrie Underwood, but instead, Garth Brooks won. And even though you're never going to find a single person who would say Garth Brooks is anything but an entertaining live performer, and that his touring numbers are anything but just extravagantly successful, him winning the award kind of left a bad taste in people's mouth. It all stemmed, um, everybody, everybody in this room right here, in this virtual room, pretty much was at the CMAs last year. And you guys pretty much saw what happened after the CMAs for all the way through the new year. And uh, it, it got a little, uh, I don't know, it just, it just got a little, it wasn't fun. Let's put it that way, okay? According to the CMA Awards, the Entertainer of the Year Award goes to the artist, and it is for the act of displaying the greatest competence in all aspects of the entertainment field. The voter should give consideration not only to recorded performance, but also to in-person performance, staging, public acceptance, attitude, leadership, and overall contribution to the country music image. So obviously when it comes to staging, when it comes to in-person performance, Garth Brooks and his whole model of going to a city and playing night after night after night there and just selling hundreds of thousands of tickets at each tour stop is impressive. But when it comes to the other aspects of that award, which is essentially being a representative, an ambassador of country music, kind of capturing the zeitgeist, being the coolest, most relevant country star of the year, it's pretty hard to argue that that is Garth Brooks at this point. So to see him win year after year after year when he's not on streaming platforms and a lot of young people don't even necessarily know who Garth Brooks is, frustrates some people because it seems to represent an old guard way of thinking. And a bunch of industry people that maybe see the dollar signs that Garth Brooks can bring in have respect for it because they too like making money and then are giving him the vote for Entertainer of the Year. When meanwhile, people like Eric Church are doing the double down tour and playing to huge crowds by himself for three hours and getting sharper and sharper as a songwriter. And other people like Carrie Underwood are continuing to release blockbuster albums and sing the theme for Sunday Night Football and host the CMA Awards and people feel like the love should be shared, like maybe someone else should win sometimes. There was one tweet in there that really stuck in my head that said, hey man, this guy, why doesn't he step down? 100% agreed. 100% agreed. So with all the love in the world, all the gratefulness, because the last thing I want to do is seem ungrateful to the CMAs and everybody that has voted for us, we are officially pulling ourselves out of Entertainer of the Year. And my number is seven, you guys know that, inside and out, and we feel very lucky with seven. And uh, it's time for somebody else, hold that award, know what that entertainer feels like, and because uh, they're all out there busting their butts. And then, you know, this is probably the perfect year for it, because I don't know how they're going to judge entertainer. I think it's the right time to do it, man. It's uh, It feels great. I feel very grateful. The reaction to this move from Garth, I'd say, has been mostly positive, but definitely still mixed. On the one hand, this is a really humble move. Garth Brooks is stepping to the side, saying it's time for someone else to get a chance to get the biggest award in country music. On the other hand, the rollout of this move, having a whole press conference, talking about how great it's been for him to win, can feel a little bit self-important, as can a lot of the things that Garth does. Every time he releases a song like people loving people and really feeling like it's his duty to speak to the moment, he can have this savior complex about him that just gets under people's skin. Morning, I was a little nervous on these things because you just want to you want to represent yourself well but at the same time you you know you're going to come off a 
sounding like a dumbass. So. Still, I think you'd have to be pretty ungenerous to say that this is only a marketing move for Garth. I think it is something where he's trying to care about the industry as a whole. He's just doing that in his very Garth way. It's been interesting to watch other country stars react to this move. Blake Shelton said, I don't give a shit what anyone says. Garth is the entertainer of the century. Luke Bryan, who has also received the Entertainer of the Year trophy, kind of moved the conversation forward and said it would be troubling if someone like Carrie Underwood or Eric Church never did win. And then hilariously, the CMA Awards actually have weighed in as well and said, you know, technically Garth can't remove himself from this process. So we will see if he is actually still nominated, but maybe he just put out a big press conference to let the voters know, I don't want you to vote for me. But I guess theoretically, the voters could still troll Garth and nominate him anyway. This also likely opens up a spot in the Entertainer of the Year category for this year. I would have to imagine it goes to Luke Combs. I mean, Honestly, no one's had a bigger, more impressive year than him. But I'll be intrigued to see if some other act that just feels overdue in a way, someone like Miranda Lambert, slips into the nominations. Meanwhile, in Garth World, he has already had a successful drive-in concert experience. This dude knows how to make freaking money. People paid $100 per car to watch a pre-recorded drive-in Garth Brooks concert. But he has again delayed the release of his upcoming album, Fun, which I don't think is ever going to come out at this point. It has literally been pre-ordered. People literally paid $10 for this album on Amazon over two years ago, and it's still not out. And I know people aren't releasing music during the pandemic, or a lot of people aren't, but I mean, Garth, you have to release this album at some point. What do you think of Garth's move? Do you think it's respectable? Do you think it's unnecessary? Do you think the intention was good, but the rollout was bad? Do you not really care at all? I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments. And then we have the news that Merle Haggard is finally getting a big, glossy Hollywood biopic. The movie has been picked up by Amazon Studios and attached to star as Merle Haggard is Sam Rockwell, who you might know from movies like Moon. And he's also set to do the singing in the film as well. If anyone saw Ken Burns' country music documentary last year, it was so clear that Merle Haggard's life story was just asking for the film treatment. Because it's truly a rags to riches story of this little scoundrel who was in and out of juvenile detention so many times that he ended up at San Quentin Prison, saw Johnny Cash perform one of his famous prison concerts there, and decided, I want to do that too. And then, as you know, he became one of the most famous country stars of all time with hits like Mama Tried. And I turned 21 in prison and life without parole and Poncho and Lefty. He even became friends with Johnny Cash. He's just got a storied, dynamic, interesting life. I'm interested to see if Sam Rockwell does end up starring in the film, how they make that work, because Sam's 51 years old and he's an amazing actor. I have no issues with that. I just wonder if it would focus on a later period in Merle's career or if we would really get to see, you know, his teenage years up to him being a star. In any case, I think it's great news. You know, a lot of country music movies have not been especially awesome lately. Reaction to the Hank Williams movie, I Saw the Light, was certainly mixed, and then you've got messes of movies like Country Strong, and then you've got movies that are really beloved like Wild Rose, and then also the Bluebird documentary, so we'll see which side of the spectrum this one falls on. Another big piece of news is that Taylor Swift is officially coming back to country radio. Taylor Swift dropped her album Folklore by surprise a couple weeks ago. It has ended up selling extravagantly well. This whole dropping a surprise album and it being a new kind of stripped back indie folk sound for her has worked really well because I think people were getting tired of the big rollouts. But if you've listened to the album Folklore, and I talked about it a little in my last video, you know there's one song near the end of the album that stands out, feels a lot more country, a lot more like the kind of high school Taylor Swift that we all first got to know, and it's called Betty. Betty, I won't make assumptions about why you And it was announced this week that Betty is actually being promoted to country radio. And when I say promoted to country radio, what I mean is that MC MCA Nashville is going to put marketing effort into getting country radio stations to add Betty into their rotation and play it. And even though New Year's Day from her Reputation album was technically given to country radio to play, it wasn't really pushed. And you actually have to go all the way back to Taylor Swift's Red album to find the last time that she was seeking country radio airplay. Betty is a song that's part of this teenage love triangle trilogy of songs that is on folklore. It's about a character named James that went and cheated on his girl Betty with some some other girl behind the mall and now he's coming up to her doorstep asking for forgiveness and hoping that she takes him in yeah, sure, that's a party. Will you have me? Will you it's 
super earnest and magical. It kind of gives me vibes of like Kiss Me by Sixpence None the Richer. It just really does feel like romantic high school love. But it's also long. It's almost five minutes. It sounds a good deal more country than most of the super poppy productions you're going to hear on country radio. And so I'll be intrigued to see if it actually is able to climb the charts. If it does, I'd be really pumped because it's definitely my favorite song on folklore. If you follow me on Instagram, you know it brings out my inner emo kid. He just wants to scream the final chorus. <laughs> Dancing in the car again! <laughs> I'm also wondering if it's gonna bring up any of the same conversation that Girl Crush did with its sort of lesbian undertones because Betty could definitely be read that way as well if you're not a keen listener and you don't know that she's singing from the point of view of someone named James, or if you think that James could be a girl since it's, you know, technically the name of Blake Lively's daughter. You can read into a lot of Taylor's music, but thus far, I don't really hear that being a big conversation. If it becomes part of the conversation, I am sure Taylor is savvy enough to spin that into marketing. As it stands though, I think Betty is a terrific song and much in the same way that I felt about John Mayer, who I'm not trying to bring up Taylor Swift's is here, but when John Mayer released In My Blood onto country radio, I was actually like, I think he should. I think it sounds right here. I kind of feel that way about Betty, and I'd love to see it become a surprise hit. Speaking of surprise hits, I want to talk quickly about Miranda Lambert getting her first number one at country radio in eight years with her song Bluebird. The house just keeps on winning. I got a wild card in my sleeve. For a few years, it has seemed like Miranda Lambert might have just officially fallen out of favor with the country radio overlords because just singles haven't performed that well. Even the lead single from her new album, Wild Card, It All Comes Out in the Wash, only got to number 14 on the chart. But Bluebird was kind of the right song at the right time. It had a hopeful message. It had an unusual lyric singing about bluebirds and wild cards and lemons. It's a well-written song by Natalie Hemby, Miranda, and Luke Dick. And then it's also very sing-alongable as well, and it became a big, big hit. Miranda said on Instagram, 2020 hasn't offered a whole lot to celebrate, especially for musicians. I'm celebrating happiness and the feeling of artistic freedom in a time where we all feel a little caged. I'm celebrating country music and all the joy it has brought to my life. She goes on to say, turns out we did have a wild card up our sleeve. I don't think chart positions and awards are always indicative of quality. And I think it's a dangerous game to start saying, if something's big, then it's just awesome. And if something's not big, then it's not quality. But when those things align, there's something that always just feels so satisfying about it. And Miranda Lambert has one of the best collective outputs of any artist that I can think of in modern country music. She really has not made a true misstep with an album. And it's just cool to see when that clicks with the public, with the industry, and someone find big success. Now we'll see what the next single from this record is going to be. I'm already on record as wanting Tequila Does, but I could also see them doing Settling Down or Dark Bars or maybe even How Dare You Love. And then just one tiny piece of news to finish off, and that's that Carrie Underwood has announced that she is releasing her first ever Christmas album called My Gift on September 25th. Now, just someone releasing an album is not really worthy, I think, of a news roundup item, but I'm including this because it just intuitively feels like it's going to be huge. You know how there are certain performers that are cool and fresh and relevant and young and people like them, but then also your mom likes them and maybe your grandmother likes them as well? Those types of performers can sell a lot of Christmas albums. Just ask Michael Buble or Pentatonix. And I can just see this album from Carrie Underwood if she puts on like big hymnal moments like Oh Holy Night. I, I just am predicting it's gonna be really, really huge and could be a sleeper blockbuster. So I didn't really mean to finish the video with that trio of Taylor, Miranda, and Carrie, all of whom kind of remained fixtures in the music industry for the last 13 years. And for like a decade of that were some of the only sort of prominent women in country music. But there we go. I'm just realizing at the end of filming, like, damn. They are really still out here doing this thing. I was gonna go all into Daniel X comments with Spotify and all the kind of ruckus that those have raised, but I think it's a more complicated issue. I would recommend reading Bob Lefsetz's Lefsetz letter about it, and I feel like he says everything that I kind of wanted to say. I understand that the industry is in flux, that people are very unhappy with Spotify payouts, but I think it's a more complicated issue than that, and he makes the argument better than I could. So that's it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts on any of these stories. I feel officially, officially, officially settled, moved, hoping to be in more of a rhythm now. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're getting outside. I hope you are not, you know, crumbling under the anxiety of 2020 like I sometimes am late at night. 
But if you are, well, just know you're not alone. I'm doing it too. And also, if you're feeling that way, listen to this song called Don't Be Sad by Scotty Sire. I'm a ray of sunshine, I fucking love life, yeah, that's me. I'm not part of like the vlog squad community. I didn't know who Scotty Sire was, but I saw this video recommended. I'm obsessed with it. This is like my favorite kind of pop music, sort of like anxious suburban boy pop. I think that song is totally brilliant. It's smart, it's snarky, and it's so catchy. So um, go listen to that and realize again, it's okay to be feeling anxious. So that's it for me, you guys. I love y'all, and I'll see you soon with a bunch more country music.